Physics lecture number two, position time graphs. If we plot the position of a moving object at increasing time intervals, we get a position time graph. This is sometimes called a distance time graph. Now suppose a car is moving east in a straight line. When it passes a tree, we note the position of the car at regular time intervals. And below is a chart showing how far the car is from the tree every two seconds. So the car is moving, and the moment it passes the tree, we hit a stopwatch. And zero is when we hit the stopwatch. So when it's right at the tree, uh, the distance from the tree is zero. And then two seconds later, the car is eight meters from the tree. Four seconds later, the car is 16 meters from the tree, and so on. Now, if we plot these values with distance on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, uh, we get the following graph. All right. Now, this graph is a uh, straight line. Now, if we pick two points on the line, we can calculate the slope of the line. So I picked points 624 and 1040. So 624 and 1040. So from these two points, uh, we can calculate the slope. So the vertical change of the rise is 40 minus 24, or 16. So this distance right here is 40 minus 24, or 16. And then uh, the horizontal change, or the run, is 10 minus 6, uh, which gives us 4 seconds. So this horizontal distance here is 10 minus 6, or uh, 4 seconds. So the slope of the line is rise over the run, rise divided by run. So the rise is 16 meters, and the run is... Uh, four seconds. So 16 divided by 4 will give us uh, 4 meters per second. So the slope represents the change in position over time, which is the definition of speed. All right. In a position time graph, the slope of the line is the speed or velocity of the object. Now since the graph is a straight line, uh, the slope or the velocity never changes. Also, since the line moves from the uh, left to the right, the object is moving in a positive direction. Now, suppose we measure the distance uh, of another car from a tree at two second intervals. So this is a different car, and uh, we start the stopwatch at time zero. So when we start the stopwatch, the car is 24 meters from the tree. Then two seconds later, the car is 24 meters from the tree. And then four seconds later, the car is 24 meters from the tree. And I think you can sort of see a pattern going on here. Now, if we plot these points, uh, we're going to get the following graph. All right. So <clears throat> here's the position of our object at each time interval. Now, if we pick points uh, 224 and 624, uh, we can compute the slope of the line as 24 minus 24, so that's the uh, change in the uh, vertical uh, dis or change in the vertical axis. 24 minus 24, which gives us zero, and then over six divided by two, six or six minus two, six minus two. So the change on the uh, along the horizontal axis is uh, six minus two, six and two right here. Change along the vertical axis. Well, it doesn't move up and down, so it's 24 minus 24. Anyway, uh, the slope of the line is going to be uh, zero. So this means that uh, the object is not moving. So if the slope is zero, the speed is zero. The object's not moving. Uh, notice that when the slope of a line is zero, you get a horizontal line. So what point are we trying to make on all this? The point is that in a position time graph, uh, a horizontal line means the object is not moving. Now, uh, suppose we measure the position of another car from a tree at two second intervals. So we have another car, and it's moving along. And uh, right when it passes the, uh, or right, uh, well, we're just measuring how far the car is when we start the stopwatch. So when we start the stopwatch, the car is 48 meters away. Two seconds later, uh, the car is 44 meters away from the tree. Four seconds later, it's 40 meters away from the tree, and so on. We see a general trend here. So plotting the points, uh, we're going to get the uh, following graph. Now, if we pick points 
um, 40, I'm sorry, 440 right here, this point right here, and 832, uh, that point right there, uh, we can compute the slope of the line as 32 minus 40, so 32 minus 40, that gives us negative 8, negative 8 because we've gone down 8 units, all right, the direction is downward, and um, horizontal change, it's going to be uh, 8 minus 4, so 8 minus 4 is 4, all right, and then um, the change in uh, along the vertical axis, negative 8, divided by the change along the horizontal axis, 4. And then we divide these two and we get a slope of negative 2. So, notice that the uh, slope is negative and that the line slants downward from left to right. So this means our object is moving at a constant speed in a negative direction. So since the motion of our object is horizontal, a negative sign means that the object is moving right to left or to the west. Now, if the object was moving vertically, a negative sign means the object is moving down or to the south. So, what's the point or what should you notice about the uh, characteristics of this graph? Well, in a position time graph, a negative slope means the object is moving backward or in a negative direction. So let's measure the position of yet another car at one second intervals as it moves in a straight line away from a tree. So, at time zero, uh, our car is right at the tree. One second later, our car is one meter from the tree. Two seconds later, the car is four meters from the tree. Three seconds later, the car is nine meters from the tree. And at four seconds, it's 16 meters away. So, we're going to plot time on the horizontal axis and distance on the vertical axis and see what sort of shape we get. So plotting these points, this is what we get. Alright, now notice that the plot of this graph is a curved line, not a straight line. See, so it's kind of flatter here and it's more steeper here. So this is a curved line, it's not a straight line. Now this shows that the object is moving faster and faster as each second passes. So for example, from 0 to 1 seconds, it covers a distance of 1 meter. But from 1 to 2 seconds, it covers this vertical distance, which is a lot more than this vertical distance. This is 3 uh, meters here. So it covers a greater distance in the second time interval, which shows that the velocity is increasing. So in this time interval, it covers 1 meter. In the same time interval here, it covers 3 meters, so the ratio is uh, 3 to 1. So since it's covering a greater distance in the same time interval, uh, the object is moving faster in this time interval. In a position time graph, if the line curves upward, the object's velocity is increasing. Now when the velocity of an object increases or changes, we say the object is accelerating. If the velocity of the car is constantly increasing, how can we determine the velocity at a particular point in time? Well, one way to do it is to sit in the car and take a picture of the speedometer at one second intervals. Um, the exact moment you snap the picture would give the instantaneous velocity of the object at that particular point in time. Now that's not very safe. A safer way to get the instantaneous velocity is to draw a tangent line through a point on the graph. Now a tangent line intersects only one point on the line. And to illustrate, suppose we want to know the slope or velocity of the car at one second and at two seconds. So what I'm going to do is <coughs> We want to know how fast the car is going at this point right here, one second, and we want to know how fast the car is going at two seconds, this point right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line through the points 1, 1, and another line through point 2, 4. <clears throat> so we're going to draw a line through this point right here, so the line is going to intersect and touch this point, and only this point. And then we're also going to draw a line that intersects or touches this point right here and only this point. All right. So this point right here is point uh, one one, and this point right here is point. Um, I'm sorry. Two four. Okay. So we're going to draw a line through this point and this point. 
Okay, so in the following picture, the green tangent line intersects the curve only at 1, 1, and the purple tangent line intersects the curve only at 2, 4. Okay, and there we are. So, <clears throat> we have a green tangent line. It intersects this point right here, point 1, 1. All right. We have this tangent line. It intersects this point right here, and this point right here is a point 2, 4. So we're intersecting a, a line intersects at one second, and another line intersects the graph at two seconds. Now, if you measure the slope of the green line, the slope right here, the slope is two. All right. Thus, the instantaneous velocity of the car after one second had elapsed would be two meters per second. And if you measure the slope of the purple line, uh, it would be four. Thus, the instantaneous velocity of the car after two seconds is four meters per second. So what this means is that at this exact time interval, at exactly one second, the car is moving at two meters per second. Why? Because of the slope of the line that goes through it has a slope of two meters per second. Likewise, the instantaneous velocity right at exactly two seconds, the car is moving at a speed of four meters per second. Why? Because the slope of the line that goes through it is also four meters per second. The instantaneous velocity of an object is its velocity at an exact moment of time. So that's the de definition of instantaneous velocity. At an exact time interval, we want to know its velocity. In a position time graph, the slope of the line drawn tangent to a point on the curve gives the instantaneous velocity at that point. So this is how you would find the instantaneous velocity by drawing tangent lines. And later on, I'll show you how to calculate the instantaneous velocity using a formula. Okay. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been physics lecture number two, position time graphs.